those are the basics for uh, carboxylic acids. Um, and now there's also naming for all the different carboxylic acid derivatives, acyl halides, anhydrides, esters, and amides, but I don't know whether you're required to know that yet or not for this midterm. Was it in chapter? So those namings would have been in chapter 20. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, so you guys were asking me earlier how to name esters, but it sounds like maybe that won't be on the test. Yeah, we looked at these before, methoxy, ethoxy. Those are ethers. Oh, so we need to know ethers. Should we review ethers? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He what he did was like in with like whatever anhydride. He showed us what an anhydride looks like, but he said we wouldn't at this point. We don't need to know how to name an anhydride yet. Okay. Good. Yeah. So, so the one thing you should know is. You should know just the general names of the functional groups. Mm -hmm. So what's the general name of this functional group? <laughs> Not sure? That is an ester. That's right. <laughs> I always confuse ester and ether. Do you have any way to remember them? Just remember they're nothing alike. <laughs> yeah, I haven't come up with a, uh, a good uh, mnemonic for that, but maybe I should, because you're right. People do tend to confuse that a lot. So this is an ester. Um, because ether is just two like think of a bad R O R, right? Right, where the R's are just simple alkane carbons. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I know what ether is like when I do it in like synthesis problems and stuff. The meaning tricks me. Do ether of that. That's how it looks like. Yeah, I know that's what, that's how I draw it in my ether. like So ether the bat. Okay. What, what was that? Ether the bat is like usually like so it looks like a bat. Ether the bat. <laughs> oh, why couldn't you say Esther the bat? Because Esther doesn't look like yeah, a bat. Yeah, Esther doesn't look like a bat. It has a little carbonyl. He doesn't have like wings like this. Right, but I'm not quite sure why ether is associated with that. Well, anyway, if it works for you. <laughs> okay, good. No, that's not, that's not <laughs> messing with it if it works for you. Okay, <laughs> good. Ether looks like a bat. So this would be a ether. Good. <laughs> and we also discussed last time how to name this. What type of general functional group is this? Amine. Yeah. This is an amine or amine. And we talked about how these don't have to be hydrogens. These could be carbon chains down here. All right, and it looks like we're not going to figure out how to name specific versions of these. It looks like you're not covering that yet. All you need to know is the general functional group name. So the general functional group name here would be? Anhydride. Right. Um. This is an anhydride. Is this an anhydride? No. No. Remember, we, because there's no oxygen here. And that's just a diketone. Yeah, it's a diketone. And the Ooh. way to add the oxygen there is through Bayer Villiger. Good point. Yeah, I guess we could add a Bayer Villiger, although I'm not sure where it would add in this case. Wouldn't it add? I don't think we ever covered adding an oxygen to. Uh, I don't think we ever added, uh, covered adding an oxygen to a diketone. So I really don't know how Bayer Villiger would react here. Uh. Um, so uh, I don't think you really learned a, an easy way to add to make this into an oxygen. Okay, uh, and it, even if you did add an oxygen, it wouldn't be an anhydride because there would still be a carbon in the middle. Even if you put an oxygen here, there would still be a carbon. The anhydride has to be carbonyl, oxygen, carbonyl. Okay. Uh, all right, but anyway, this is an anhydride. What's the big thing that we learned that you can do with these today? We learned one big thing you can do with these, which is that they have an especially acidic alpha carbon. Why did we learn that this alpha carbon is especially acidic? Because of resonance, which you can take to go to the right. O or to the O. Yeah, it can do resonance on either side. So this is an especially easy way to make enolates. Good. But this is not an anhydride. All right, very good. And it's called the 2 4. It's over here? Yeah, it depends on how long these carbon chains are. Sometimes this is called a 1 3 ketone, just to show that these are one, in, there's one carbon in between them. So. We can't give the IUPAC name until we know what these R groups are. Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, what would be a general name for this? Halo. Acetyl. Uh, this is an acyl halide. <laughs> we wouldn't want to call it acetyl unless we knew there were two carbons. Remember, acet no, means two. The general word here is acyl halide. Remember, we saw that oftentimes this group here is called an acyl group. So this can be called an acyl halide. And again, I think we won't go over the specific nomenclature here, but we should know how to name these in general. 
All right, so those are our carboxylic acids uh, or acid derivatives. Okay, now let's actually give the IUPAC name for this compound. What type of functional group is this? Ether. Yeah, so I think you guys were asking about the nomenclature for ethers. So let's put the nomenclature for that. Any guesses? We can go through it together if you want. Yeah, why don't we go through this together? The key thing is ethers are not named with suffixes, even in the IUPAC. Ethers are always named with prefixes. So the first thing we have to do is find the parent chain, and that's the longer carbon chain. So that would be this one over here. Wait, this is the longer carbon chain. Random question. THF is an ether, right? It's a cyclic ether. That's right. Okay. So THF is not the IUPAC name for it. It's the right. common name, but that's what everyone calls it. So would it be ethoxy propane? Or one ethoxy? It. Yeah, well, I think the first thing you said was right. Ethoxy propane. Why propane? Because the main chain has three carbons. And you don't need to name, say one because it's given that it's connected to the one? We do have to say the number one. Okay. Because ethers don't have to be terminal. So you do have to say one ethoxy propane. All right, this is hard because most things we name as suffixes like OL is an alcohol, or AL is an aldehyde, or ONE is a ketone, but the IUPAC way of naming ethers is always with a prefix. There is no suffix here, so this is just one ethoxy. The parent chain is the longer carbon chain. I started the numbering here to give the functional group the lower number, and what's the prefix you use? Alkoxy. You just use the right alk. Since this is two carbons, it's ethoxy. So the prefix for ethers is, in general, alkoxy, but you can use the right root for the right number of carbons. So it could be methoxy or ethoxy or pentoxy or whatever. Uh, this is not ethyloxy. That would be a common mistake. The IUPAC name here is just ethoxy. All right, so that's one ethoxy. If that had like a carbonyl on the one, we wouldn't have to know how to name it because it's an ester, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, we're not going to cover this naming yet because now it would be an ester. That's right. Good point. How about, oh, uh, you should also know the common name for this. The common name system for naming ethers is very simple. This would be called ethyl propyl ether. Oh, I keep going. Yeah. Can you put the smaller number first or alphabetical order? Alphabetical. Okay. In the common system, and this would be three separate words. That's right, so this is like someone said, this is similar to the, the common system for naming ketones. So this would just be called ethyl propyl ether. That's a pretty commonly used system as well. Both of these are pretty commonly used. Okay, um, so when you're ready, we can try this one. Can we do the common or the, should we do the... Um, Let's just do the IUPAC. Not right. Now, which is the longer carbon chain here? The one on the right, because it's got three carbons. Uh, very tricky. Did I do it wrong? It's just, notice, compare this with one ethoxy propane. Um, we still have an ethoxy group, but now the ethoxy group is not on the terminal carbon, it's on the number two carbon. So it's very clear now that we're naming it as a substituent. So, so let's say two. you added another. One, uh, that would just be like three ethoxy. Okay, got it. Oh no, it would still be two because you number it the other way. Okay, got it. So this would be two ethoxy propane. Um, the common name is a little bit tricky here. Um, it's clear this is an ethyl group, but this is a branched substituent. Propyl. 
Isopropyl. Isopropyl. Good. That's good that you remember that. So this would be, the common name for this would be ethyl isopropyl. Show this as three separate words. Ethyl isopropyl ether. Because this is a branched propane substituent. So if you remember back to um, the beginning of last term, you guys might have learned these common names for branched substituents. Ethyl isopropyl ether. Good. 